Welcome to the greatest pod where we discuss and debate what makes something great. I'm Ron Swallow. I'm Ed Greer. And today, uh, Ron came up with this idea. Yeah, sequels versus series or even sequels versus standalones. Right. Like, you know, the, the, what I was thinking about is uh, because we saw Spider-Man, no spoilers, but how good it was and that it's the third in a trilogy. And now they're going to make a ton more for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. And at some point, one will be a stinker and people will be like, should we even do this? And that's something I think about like a lot is a lot of people think you shouldn't do sequels. I think another one that came up was uh, for me was The Matrix. I haven't seen the new one yet, mm-hmm. but a lot of people felt like the end of The Matrix didn't need more movies. Well, OK, well, let's just talk about that real quick. I am definitely fucking in that camp. And yeah. I understand that like some stunt man put a new addition on his house because Keanu's old ass want to do the 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 Matrix thing again. You know what I'm saying? And I get that. And that's powerful. And that's cool. Like putting people to work, doing all this shit for the economy, yada, yada, yada. But as far as like storytelling stuff, I didn't feel like any of the, the two Matrix movies that came after the first one were necessary at all. At the end of that first movie, obviously, everybody knows what happens. And that status quo at the end of that movie is a dope place to just leave it. But I will say this. I have seen that new Matrix movie. And I shit you not, if they had to just stopped after that first one and did this one, people would be losing their fucking shit, dude. They'd be losing their shit because they would see this one as like, oh shit, at the end of that one, it didn't end. And this is what ended up happening to the guy. Oh shit, that's fucked up. It would blow their minds. But because we had so much shit from the sequels, and the, the fucking architect, and I talk to the guys, and the squiddies are real, and I really have power inside, uh, outside the Matrix, because everything is the Matrix, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It's just too much. But, like, going from that thing to this sequel would have blew people's minds. So I think where I'm coming from in this conversation is, I bet you a lot of movies, if you just had, like, two, and they both meant a lot, I think that could be more powerful than a series or 57 of them or whatever. You know, the story would be more powerful with less. It's like vanilla extract. (laughs) Yeah. And to be clear, we're not talking about planned trilogies. Like if if a movie is a planned trilogy, great. Do your planned trilogy. But if it's not and then you try to make it a trilogy or you try to make it you try to make a sequel just because it was successful. Um, The one I actually you know what the funny thing is, though, I have a couple of exceptions and that isn't good movies. It's terrible martial arts movies. You can make <laughs> as many kickboxers as you want. I don't care. I, I just not sure it's necessary. I you know, we have some great ones. You have Terminator and then Terminator 2. You have Alien and you have Aliens. But see, that's where that's where I'm going, bro. That's where because I was talking after about. That, it, that, that's what I'm saying. They, that's what yeah. I'm saying. There's so many. If you start to piece it out, there's so many fucking movies where if you just had a stopped at two. Like five years apart, the shit would have been ill. Like imagine, imagine if Empire Strikes Back ended with Luke fucking up a Darth Vader and winning the day. Yeah. And you just kind of stop there. And from those two movies, you just spun off a billion books and cartoons and different shit like that. Dude, people would be even more geeked over Star Wars because you would have saw those two stories. You wouldn't have had anybody to argue with you about whether the Ewoks are cool or not. You wouldn't have had to you wouldn't have had to blow up the Death Star again. You blow up the Death Star in the first one, so you done blown up the bad guy's base. Then you go to where wherever his ramshackle place is where he's holding up right now, and you beat his ass. You know what I'm saying? You learn mm-hmm. the shit in the in the second movie to go into the guy's house and beat his ass and get it there. Yeah. And like I said, it's not about Star Wars. It's like, like you said, aliens, the first one. And then they waited until the, the first one's 1970, like nine. Then they wait to like 1980, yep. 86, wait, be 86, uh, 86. Uh, and aliens comes out. You did it. Done. You did it. It's perfect. Godfather. I mean, Everybody loves suck to suck the dick of the Godfather. You know, the Godfather, if you don't even like those movies, if they stop that too, they'd be in the house. That being said, Rocky. You know what happens if you don't have Rocky 3, Ed? See, but that's, I don't know, man. I think you go 
No Mr. T. Rocky, you go Rocky. And Rocky one, you let him win. And then Rocky two is Rocky three. And then you stop. Stop. Because look what you've done. You've done a story where he and then you do Creed. This guy. Yeah, he, dude. Well, if you like I said, in my perfect world, you just fucking stop. And then yeah, Creed is a spin-off. So yeah, yeah. whatever. It's Creed not, it's not a direct spin-off. sequel. Exactly. Yeah. Something like that. It's just like so many times where you just uh quit. You know, like uh, even even Predator, dude. My girlfriend thinks Predator Two is good. Now let's <laughs> not get let's not get crazy. Okay. But if Predator Two was really really good, like as good as the first one, in a world where Predator Two was as good as Predator One, in a world where Predator Two had all the action and suspense of Predator One, they had Aliens versus Predator, Predator Six, the Predatorying, <laughs> dude, all of that shit, yeah. all of that shit that they did after the the after the after that one didn't make any fucking sense. The predators are like uh, grab it up serial killers. Like like the predators could even, I know the predators could understand what a serial killer is, but why would a predator in in the movie Predators? The predators grab a bunch of people from Earth and take them to an alien planet and hunt them. Like, I guess the young predators are taking practice on some of the deadliest people gathered from Earth. So they put all the deadliest people from Earth and they hunt them for sport. So you got a a samurai Yakuza guy, like a Yakuza guy who will shoot you with a MAC-10, and he's got a samurai blade. And then you've got this other guy and this other guy and this other guy, and they're all mercenaries. they got big guns, a lady's a sniper, badass soldiers from all over the world. And then they had Topher fucking Grace. (laughs) <laughs> and Topher Grace, spoiler alert, Topher Grace turns out to be a serial killer who, like, drugs women or something and kills them. I'm like, why yes. the fuck would a predator need to fucking kill that? Yeah. Why would a predator need to do that? That's it's dumb not a shit. challenge. It's so fucking stupid. And, and, what, and I think somebody, you know what? I'm making up a theory right now. What if the predators were trying to see what would happen if they had their own predator in their midst? while they were being hunted by predators wouldn't that be an interesting psychological thing and then i'm thinking look how the predators act they don't give a fuck about none of that intellectual psycho- psychological shit no. their whole apex mind has been f- get me some melee weapons that are dope and let me at them and give me some fly spaceships so i can go all different places and shoot stuff and kill stuff that's their whole mentality so i don't know man just Stop before you get to doing stupid shit like that. It's the whole point of that whole diatribe. Stop developing the concept before you start doing shit like that. Or have some shit like that being a dumb novel in the YA section yeah. or something. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You don't have well, to have then, to be part of the canon. Well, then here's here's an interesting thing we could maybe do in this situation. Then let's say, let's say we take some of the ones that are a lot of them, a lot of sequels, and we pare them down to the best ones. Just just a little quick thing. So because what well, mostly I'm thinking about Rambo, another Stallone thing where you get like, what is a Rambo one, two, three, and then the 2008 one. And I think maybe another one that I'm not thinking about. Yeah, I think I think in order to fit, do that one, you do you do Rambo one. And then instead of Rambo two, obviously you have Rambo two because Rambo two is kind of awesome in its own jingoistic way. But you have him do Rambo 2 on the people from Rambo 4 or 5. Like, yeah. and, 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 and the Rambos 4, 5, and like 6, 7, 8, whatever. All the Rambos after the Vietnam one are him taking on like Indonesian pirate rapers and just the most detestable motherfuckers on earth cartels who murder people and disfigure women's faces and steal them from their parents and put them in a sex trade you know what i'm saying he he really engineers Sly alone engineers the movies so that rambo doesn't nowadays he doesn't just kill other people's armies he kills bad people that the armies and yeah. the and the fucking police can't fuck with yeah, so he's made they like a either they can't punishment. handle or they're untouchable right. for political reasons or, exactly. or whatever. Yeah, exactly. That's, that would be perfect. Yeah. Um. So then, but then there's some silly stuff like maybe camp is one of the times that you can have multiple sequels, because I'd argue that all of the Fast and the Furious movies are kind of fun. 
not good movies, arguably, mm -hmm. but fun. Well, I, I'd say with, with that, give me the first one to introduce the concept yeah. and then give me five. You know Fair what I'm enough. saying? Like, yeah. you know, dude, the first one we introduced the super group of super dudes, and then the second one we introduced the super cop who's going to try to stop him. But in the end, he ends up being like, "Ah, you guys are awesome," and they drive over to the sunset. And then you get a bunch of you do a bunch of rides and video games. I think you do Fast and the Furious video games that were actually ill as fuck. Like the driving parts would be like old school Burnout. Burnout was a game where basically you would get points. For trying to almost hit cars, so like if you you be if you drove against traffic, your boost meter would start to fill up exponentially, <laughs> right? Yeah, because it's a dangerous activity, right? That's the driving part, and the fighting part is like the illest fighting game uh, side scroller that you ever saw, like a straight up old school. You got all type of moves, and everybody's got different moves. Like Tyrese got the all hell no, nah, whatever, where he, <laughs> he trips a guy or whatever. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody's got their different moves. So you get Hobbs and Shaw and Vin and everybody. Boom. Make a billion dollars, jillion dollars off of that. But of course, that's stupid as fuck because those movies each make a billion dollars. So I'm stupid. Yeah. But if and you had to pare it down to two, yeah. If you had to pare it down to two, do those two. Now, what about horror movies? Should horror movies have sequels? Well, what's a good horror movie sequel? Like a truly great horror I mean, movie I, sequel. I can't think of any. I mean, I know Saw. People love the Saw franchise, apparently. I, I have never been a fan of that type of of uh, movie. So I've just never even watched the first one because I don't need to see uh, horror gore porn or whatever they call it. Gore porn. I don't. That's not my thing. So I don't know if those are good. I can't have a strong opinion about it. But I kind of feel like you could probably just do one or two. Because like seven, I think seven. Why would you have a sequel to seven? I mean, and again, these are like just artistically. We know that all the money motivations of making a billion yes, of these. Absolutely. But just as an artistic exercise, uh, doing two, the challenge of doing two. Like uh, fucking and yeah, why would Jaws have a sequel? And in, in any sort of just universe, why would Jaws have a sequel? He's gonna kill a shark again. This motherfucker's beach is getting assailed by <laughs> sharks. Yeah. Super intelligent ones that know how to like get out of traps and pick locks <laughs> and do all this uh, basically a uh, deep blue sea type shit machinations. You know what I mean? Like it's just ridiculous. Yeah, and I and this comes into. Uh, the what you said before of of uh, sequels versus series. Sometimes I think some of these would make great series. Like let's take the Bourne trilogy. That's the Bourne trilogy. Those are good movies, but frankly, the Bourne stuff would be fantastic TV shows. Especially yeah. if it was high budget, high concept, with with you know someone who's basically a movie director on each hour episode, anyways. I mean, they did a they did a, a series on Amazon about uh, Hannah. I haven't watched the very last season, but I think it's like she's like the the Hannah thing is like her 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 um her dad takes her out into the woods and trains her to be a killer, and then she finds out later that she was like kind of genetically engineered to be a killer, like the and and like genetically engineered in a realistic way, like you pick somebody, you breed them, you do this shit, you like yeah, yeah. realistically like get get a lady from Chechnya, the Ukraine, and kidnap her and all this bad shit. That type of shit, do that type of shit and make a little girl who from the get-go was trained to fuck, fuck shit up. Uh, and he didn't want her to be an assassin, basically. So he takes her off into the woods and trains her because he she he knows that eventually the person that made her will come for their property. And that person is played by Tilda Swinton in the movie. Just beautiful performance. So, but they made that into a TV show, and it was better than the movie. Yeah. It's it, it took more time to develop the idea of a young girl being on her own with a whole inter international spy outfit out to get her while she's hitchhiking in Cairo or whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? Like it was, it was really atmospheric and like the shit she was going through was kind of like teenage girl shit, like want to like boys and stuff. But like if a boy tries to touch her wrong, she like could break his arm instantly from her training. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. all that type of shit, they explored it. It was dope as fuck. Yeah. Because I feel like also that works really well with books. So, you know, L Lord of the Rings, notwithstanding it is a trilogy of books and they made three movies they left a ton of stuff out and a lot of the stuff they left out 
was necessary to leave out for moving the story forward, especially considering, as you have pointed out many times, there's a crap load of walking and doing nothing. <laughs> and in those books, there's a decent amount of that too. But like they could have done a lot more of that and really got the like inner workings of each character's like thoughts and what they're going through and all the stuff that you get to read in books that you can see through series. That's why the Witcher is working so well is mm. it, it works really well for a series format. So, you mm. know, I, I guess with books, I got to go, I think maybe go TV um, and should, and, and, you know, I, it's hard because like, I think about like Spider-Man, as it stands right now, I loved all three of these movies, but if we're real about it, I almost want to see what the next Spider-Man movie is and call this past Spider-Man movie and the next one the only two movies that should exist. Huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. I guess. This, but, you know, but like I said, this this last one, though. Don't get Dark Knight disease because people yeah. were saying that, like, basically you could you could have just started with Dark Knight. It's like, no. Technically, you couldn't. You just couldn't have Batman showing up with that goofy ass voice saying shit to homeboy about this Joker person just right off the bat. It's just that was Batman eighty nine. They did it. They did that story was a better way to do that than it would than the Dark Knight would be just coming out of nowhere. You had to see this grounded Batman doing this shit, figuring it out, so that we could you know have the second one. However, you know. Those movies, Batman 1 and Batman 2, that's actually pretty great. I mean, yes, it's murder Batman. We all know that. <laughs> it's, it's it's murder Batman. But but it's there's still a pretty good it's a pretty good mo- uh, sequel. Um so what are I, I also want to say what are you th- what are the sequels that you liked a lot that you thought were you know great like perfect i mean there's not that many with that's that's why when you first uh 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 kind of proffered this concept i was like i don't know man i just don't want to be another one of those podcasts that's like hey aliens is the bitch and gotta find it too and you know um what what what's another what's what's literally another one uh aliens godfather 2 um, fucking spider-man 2 Spy- yes yeah, okay lethal weapon 2 is a perfect fucking example of why you should only have two yes because in lethal is. fucking weapon 2 even if you did it as the story that shane black originally wanted to tell which was Riggs dying at the end even if you wanted to tell that story it'd be better to do two of them and do that yep. story obviously in the second movie yep. and the way that they played out he gets to get he's so sad that his wife got killed and I know that them kind of tying his wife's killer into the case of and the South African dudes and shit was kind of kind of ham fisted, but just as a story thing, he's so sad in the first one because his wife is dead and his life is falling apart and all this kind of shit. And in the second one, he gets to resolve all that and be happy as fuck at the end. Yep. End it. Let's take let's talk about Die Hard. Do we even need a second Die Hard? Well, you don't need a second Die Hard, but if you're going to do two of them, you do one and three, just like fucking um, yep. uh, um, Raiders of the Lost Ark. If you do Raiders of the Lost Ark one and three, the shit would work so fucking beautifully, dude. I'm not saying Temple of Doom is so bad, but dude, one and three. Yeah, and I and I got to argue that the the one I think the one exception is is seems to be if you have interconnected serialized storytelling because obviously the Marvel universe like did really well, but if you had Iron Man and then didn't have two or three, if you had Thor and then, but you need, you need, you need Thor two, right? Because his mom dies in that one. Right. Well, the thing is Iron Man, Iron Man, Iron Man one, and with then a shortened, with a shortened fight scene at the end, shortened Iron Iron, Iron Man, Iron Man one, Avengers, yeah, then Captain America, 
a Captain America movie, I know this would be blasphemous, but if you could have a Captain America movie that was a lot of what happened in the first one, which again, it's a it's a great movie, don't get me wrong. But I'd say you take a nice 40 minute scoop out of that movie, all the really important parts, a 40, 50 minute scoop out of that. And then you make the Winter Soldier movie basically as is like you got some old timey Scooby do 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 footage. And then they go cut to present day and he's kicking dudes off the bow of the ship and fucking dudes up in espionage organiz- you know, uh, type of shit. Because it's like it shows you that this is what Captain America used to do. He used to be a symbol. Now he's doing shields bidding in the middle of the Baltic Sea on an unauthorized mission to steal shit, basically. Yeah. Like how the mighty have fallen, how this concept has changed. So that's basically the first Captain America movie, this hybrid between Captain America 1 and Captain America 2. And then Iron Man 2 and Captain America 2 are fucking Civil War. Civil yep. The story of Civil War is that. And they are, they've known each other in the Avengers. They have these two hardcore-ass movies. Their, their sequel is Civil War. Yeah. And then, you know, Thor and all the other ones for setups for uh, uh, Endgame and Infinity Gauntlet or Infinity War. And the, and so, the thing is, th- th- this, that, that, like you said, it's it's kind of a futile prospect to try to do Marvel like that. Because obviously you're right. Like uh, I was thinking earlier that uh, this principle can't apply to Spider-Man because Spider-Man's never going to just have two movies. And a lot of these no. things are never going to have two movies just for business purposes. But we're talking about billions of dollars. We're not talking about, talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. Talk we're about talking about billions. Yeah, we're, when, when we're talking about Batman, Spider-Man, not necessarily Superman, uh, <laughs> which is pretty yeah. fucking sad and weird. But uh, when we talk about Batman, Spider-Man, people like that, you go and have a bunch of movies. That's yep. just what it is. Um, okay, and it has so- to be that way because it, mm-hmm. it also works with the style of storytelling they do to have lots of adventures. It actually makes sense. Well, are there any movies that you know of that you think – have a sequel in them you know what i'm saying as a concept you know because it's like uh i know that in my mind so many people are i'm a weird tweener because i love the movie tremors but i don't like any of the sequels and a lot of people tremors is like an all-in or all-out concept like you can't say that tremors one exists and the rest of these four dollars straight to video sci-fi ones don't exist you gotta take all of it the ones where the print the tremors are literally People with legs and like a trimmer's upper body suit walking around and grabbing people. They don't even tunnel through the earth anymore. They're just kind of walking around doing stuff. They're yeah. they're bad. But like a trimmer sequel where we get to find out what the world thought of that event and make it a fucking Godzilla movie, but not quite as big a scale. Like a Godzilla movie where you only have $50 million. <laughs> Do a big story, but like Tremors over again in the Aliens fashion. Do Tremors over again in the Aliens fashion. Fucking Val and and homeboy uh, Fred Ward are called in because we got a Tremor situation. Y'all the only motherfuckers that took out a Tremor. You know what I'm saying? You, uh, you <laughs> yeah. and this chick, you and, this, you and the doctor chick are the only people who know about Tremors. So come here and consult with us about this shit. And oh, hell. So like you got these these hick dudes and soldiers and shit trying to fight a giant tremor or a group of tremors in, in this, I don't know, this way out place in the outback or some shit. Boom. That's your fucking movie. It's just like aliens, you know, just do it over again with these guys as kind of consultants who've been near the phenomena before. That yeah. would have made a great sequel. So have you seen Don't Look Up? I have. And I assume you've seen Idiocracy as well. You mean I've seen Don't Look Up? Not Idiocracy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they're the same. They're they're not the same, but they're the same. Um, uh, and the thing is, part of me would like to see sequels to those. Ariel was like, is there going to be a sequel? The ending is rough, you know what I mean? So I think... I I wonder about movies like that if there could be sequels. Like Idiocracy, if there was a sequel, is there hope at some point that people get smarter and we start fixing things? Well, I mean, but that's a – But is that a good movie? Because that's a terrible movie. 
because it's never good to make a movie where things get better. That's not. Well, that's not I mean, good. I th- I think I think that might be the the last um the last true uh, hurdle that we have to climb as a culture is being able to make a story like that. You know what I mean? And make it compelling. Like, okay, get, getting shit to go exact go right obviously has a bunch of uh, peril fraught within it. Like if we were really trying to st- we if like if we were really trying to start a, a new society somewhere from scratch, we would straight up have to do a bunch of things that like fucking cavemen figured out. But we won't be able to figure it out because we got five logistics professors next to four engineers, next to five plumbers, next to whoever the fuck, and they're all trying to figure out how to make society over. So the plumbers are like, well, society is a pipe, you see, and it needs to be cleaned. And the civil <laughs> engineers are like, well, actually, pipes are about uh, actually pipes aren't quite it. Politicians are like, well, actually, the world is a whatever you can convince people of. That's what the world is, you know, and everybody's yeah. arguing it from their goofy point of view. And we have to make society over again. Based on that, that's a that's a story for your ass. But I think we as people would much rather watch Seal Team Six blow up Obama. I mean Obama. <laughs> <laughs> there is a part of society that there would love to see Seal Team <laughs> Seal Team Six blow up Obama. <laughs> there's, definitely, there's definitely a demographic. You yeah. bring them out with those Kevin they, Sorbo movies. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say they don't listen to our <laughs> podcast, but still. <laughs> oh shit uh get that motherfucker for thought crimes <laughs> um but no okay so basically uh any other movies where there could be a sequel maybe there's a sequel that they're missing ah i think you know what i mean i'm i'm the oldest motherfucker in the world but when i was a little kid i saw a movie called blue thunder and that oh. movie could have a fucking sequel because like now that we got this attack helicopter that can spy on the citizenry and shoot people from a mile away and blackmail people and bring down governments and take on the air force. What happens with that? What's how has the world changed? Like what, how do we grapple with that? What's, yeah. what's their next mission? I mean, you know, there's a part of me that would love to see an enter the dragon sequel. Oh man. Well, yeah, it's impossible. So obviously. Many, yeah. For so many reasons, that would be the shit. Yeah. But still, I don't know. It's just because that I think that movie was made for 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 sequels in a way because you just have a badass who infiltrates, you know, evil dictatorships in places where you know people are being treated badly, and he rescues them. I mean, I mm-hmm. I don't know. It's a relatively simple formula, and then kick ass martial arts. So what if we uh, we got a black dynamite too? I think that's very worthy of that of that treatment. Okay, so black dynamite too. I would be cool with that. Um, I think on that one he should go to space, like black dynamite in space. <laughs> <laughs> I one hundred percent agree that with that. Um, and like. Oh, yeah. And he thinks he's going to fight aliens. And instead, he joins the side of the aliens because uh, there's like some evil conglomerate from uh, the Earth trying to take over the uh, aliens hometown. Oh, they live didn't get a sequel. And I don't think it oh, should. Yeah. But if, if we if, like he starts off like a mega war, you know what I'm saying? Like no, no spoilers for the movie, but like. At the end of it, a mega war is basically started and, and like a, a major victory is won because that's how movies work. But the way that they do it in that movie is so fresh and like, dude, there is a movie that takes place after that. I was also thinking with your with your um End of the Dragon one, that's kind of like uh, I kind of want to do something like that, like with the, the Snake Plissken of it all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. You you infiltrate a place and you got this specific ass mission to do. Like in, in Enter the Dragon, it wasn't nece- necessarily he was like going in there to like solve everything. He had a specific goal, and as a as an um outcropping of him achieving his goal, he set a bunch of people free and kicked a bunch of ass and freed Kung Fu Island basically through yeah. his exploits. You know what I'm saying? But he went in there with a specific personal goal. So it's like I kind of love that for like a fucking Enter the Dragon. Who damn dude fucking oh you know who should have got a fucking sequel as a fucking career? 
the guy who played Bruce Lee, uh, Bruce Lee, the uh, 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 yeah, Jason uh, Scott Lee, Jason fucking Scott Lee, dude. Yeah, damn that dude. He did a couple of decent movies and then a couple of real bad movies, and that was the. Oh, dude, he end. was in he was in Soldier beating up Kurt Russell because yeah. he played like this new version of the super soldier that fucks up the old super soldiers, yeah. and uh, I think I don't think that that movie could ha- should have a sequel necessarily, but that world was kind of interesting. Like you make a soldier. And then you cast him out and you tell him he's not good enough to be a soldier anymore. And he finds his purpose defending a group of settlers from a bunch of super soldiers who are going to send to wipe him out. That's like a story for your ass. Like David Webb Peoples yeah. wrote that and he he uh, wrote um, Unforgiven. You can kind of oh. see the bones of the type of shit he likes to write about. I As stupid as this is, I want to see a true lie sequel, man. Ooh. Uh, show me how it happened. What what happened with it? But you know what I think would be dope about it is if they figure out that like it's cool that his wife is down with the missions and shit, but she can't quite take it. And it's a big doubt whether she can actually do it. And then yeah. in the end, she fucking could totally fucking do it, slams and jams it, and like finds new reservoirs of strength within herself. But the movie definitely shouldn't just be, yeah, she could do it. Everything's the greatest. You know, it's got to be some trials and tribulations of being a fucking secret agent with your husband. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, of course, there do do you do a trilogy of that where the last one is that because they were are now a well-known badass secret agent team. But within that secret agent world, they're kind of like known. And then people try to take them out because of that. And that's the end. And they both die. <laughs> well, I'm going to lovingly veto that sequel Fine. because it would make Fine. zero Fine. dollars. <laughs> it would. It would be terrible. <laughs> I can't think of something less successful. They're going to spend I, like $100 million dollars doing that perfect. third. And then no. they both die in like a, a horrific fashion, and everybody, <laughs> and it's like kind of out of nowhere. Well, dude, it happens, and that's just 40, the end. The screen goes black. There's not even credits, dude. It happens forty minutes in, and the runtime of the movie is two hours and ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to figure out what happens after Harry Tasker and Homegirl get killed forty minutes in the movie. Just like, what are we gonna do for the rest of this runtime? I guess the guy in the mailroom will now be <laughs> the main the main character. I think you're onto something with that born shit should be series. And I think maybe if you had a great action actor, like maybe the dude from warrior or something. Yeah. If warrior got canceled, God forbid, uh, if I could enter the dragon series with that dude <laughs> would be so sick. And but you wouldn't would even be. have to call it that. It'd be, you could call it something else, but it'd be basically enter the dragon, the fucking series where he's just like kind of an agent that goes in and fuck shit up places. Like a fucking like a a, a basic a Asian MacGyver type of shit. Yeah, like he he's a destabilizing agent in these ad- adventures that he's sent on, and he's like kind of part human target, part you know what I mean. Like I get myself involved in adventures on purpose type guy. I kind of love that shit, dude. I love those things. It's like me too. I I like it when they go to seek it out. It's not something that just happens to them, you know. So I think that the argument we're making is that sometimes. A sequel shouldn't be a sequel, and the first movie shouldn't even be a movie. It should <laughs> yeah. just be a series. Well, dude, just imagine imagine Thor if they started out with Ragnarok. Like, yeah. and I know you probably can't. So let's say they start out with Thor one, but Thor one is more like Ragnarok, <laughs> frankly. What if you, you combined what, what if you combined Thor one and Thor two just to have the the sadness? And the tragedy that you get mm-hmm. from Thor 2 mm-hmm. into one movie and made it a little more fast paced and and more emotionally uh, driven, yet also with the comedy that we could see so that you're fixing so that when we get to Ragnarok and the subsequent movies in the MCU, we got the we could be like, oh, he's funny now because he had to become funny. His well, and, life and is tragedy. Thor- yeah, well, Thor, Thor truthers, though, will tell you that Thor 1 was trying to be funny all over the place. 
It oh, just yeah, I guess didn't it necessarily, was. you know what I'm saying? It wasn't necessarily like as dope as Taika Waititi being funny or whatever. <laughs> Thor <you know>? truthers. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, there are some people who are really fucking tired of hearing that Thor is the Thor 1 and Thor 2 are like the worst movies and all this kind of shit. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah. the Thor sucks so bad. Why are you sucking his wiener so hard all through all the Avengers movies? All through because his uh, because his portrayal was better in those movies. Shut the fuck up. Why do you be worshiping him through all these other movies? But you tell he's talking about his movie suck. Suck my dick. Suck my Norse dick. Right off my body. You know, there's there's people out there who are doing that. It ain't me, though, because I'm definitely with the herd. <laughs> is, <laughs> you is, know. is that like a Norse dick track? <laughs> okay, that's, that's the worst joke I've ever made. I'm ashamed. <laughs> I'm ashamed of that joke. I just want you all to know that normally I'm against puns. But I think that that technically is wordplay pun, so I'm going to allow it. <laughs> I'm going to allow myself and to have forgive said it? myself. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I don't think that there's any comedies that I would have liked to see turned into sequels. Oh, uh, do we miss a sequel? Do, we missed. Do we, we want missed Wedding Singer two? No. no. <laughs> Happy because Gilmore com- too. Like comedies, honestly, dude. That's another thing about comedies. Comedies, most of the time, I think people are just really happy that a comedy made its money back because, they, like, a comedy is kind of a. It's almost like a risky proposition, but also a safe one. Like a, a hundred million dollar comedy is risky as fuck. A fifteen million dollar comedy with an established star is not right. That's true. So, uh, so it's like this, this game that you play when you do a comedy movie. So like, yeah, when you see how many movies, like there's no happy Madison two or no shit like that. Like they, they, they tell these stories that are full of these bits and they do as many bits as they could think of on this subject. And it's fucking done. There's very few like meet the fuckers. You know what I mean? Where it's like, there's a certain amount of bits that are going to be done about a guy meeting the guy's parents. And they're like, nope. What if we met some more motherfuckers and some more, but we could meet so many motherfuckers <laughs> in this world. You know what I mean? And that's, that's kind of what spawned that franchise, but mostly it doesn't happen that way. You know, everything can't be Beethoven. <laughs> True. The movie with the dog. Not the, so what do you think's gonna, what, how are you feeling about there being uh you know, like 87 John Wick, John Wick's. Dude, I'm glad you th- mentioned that because I thought of it earlier, but then I fucking lost it because, you know, I'm so fucking high right now. Um, <laughs> but do I think uh, John Wick, the thing that's so dope about John Wick is John Wick's like Spider-Man or James Bond right now. Yeah. You can't imagine them just not doing more and more and more until some side of giant point where it's like, ah, we can't fucking do this anymore. So we got to go out on top. Okay, because like, I, I, and I think obviously, if I were to condense the two, I would do John Wick one and John Wick three would be the ones that I just said. Okay, just condense one and two into one, and just top it off with three. Because man, there's some shit in three that is just. Oh, is it two? One, they're all dope. I fucking love. <laughs> I fucking They're love great. the John Wick movies. Two and three, though, are just so packed with action. It's well, kind and, of insane. And I got to say, this is my argument is like Raid 1 and Raid 2 are fantastic. And I think that in action movies, sequels are pretty great because you're basically getting a kick-ass stunt team together to make another kick-ass stunt movie that looks amazing with an actor who can also pull that off. I mean, yeah. if they come out with a nobody too, I'll fucking watch it. Yeah, dude. Nobody, nobody was, nobody's going to get a sequel number one, and it is going to be super fucking fresh. And we are going to figure out exactly how much his wife knows of his uh, extracurricular activities. Yeah, and you know, I, I, I don't know. I think action movies lend itself to sequels better than like a lot of other movies. So, you yeah, know, like, there shouldn't I don't know if there should be any dramatic sequels. Honestly, I don't I don't know if you need that shit. Well, a lot of times they're like comedies. They're they're trying to tell you. 
this uh, is this why people don't respect action movies? Because like comedies and dramas normally yeah. present a problem, solve the problem in an emotionally fulfilling way, and they're done with that story. Whereas action movies, because they're a collection of stunts loosely strung together by why there are stunts, yeah. you can just do them over and over and over and over and over and over again. You make John Wick and it looks amazing and it kicks ass and you got Keanu Reeves in it. Okay, well, now you want to make a movie with Keanu Reeves and um, Halle Berry. Just call mm. it something else and have the same kick-ass stunts, and you just say, from the stunt team that brought you John Wick, you don't have mm. to do John Wick too. Okay, but see, that, see, I think that, that this is the checkmate of the conversation. That's why it counts that the story and the characters are there, and it's not just strung together stunts. Because if you just did that, they're, you, Seattle, they're not going to do a character better than John Wick. They're just not. They're going to decide to do this movie with all the same stuff, but they don't be John Wick. That's like when they had fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger and goddamn Red Sonja, but he wasn't Conan. It's like, what the fuck am I looking at here? <laughs> Even Why are you looked doing exactly this? like Conan. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? This doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I think that that would be not to belittle that idea, but I think that's why they don't do it. But I, I'll tell you another crazy. Oh dumb shit! Idea. You know who didn't have a sequel? Commando. Yeah, that Commando two would. But that's the thing. They With tried his to daughter do grown up mm-hmm. and a badass, and then they team up, and <laughs> the other the the daughter's kid is kidnapped. Well, dude, but you know what? I think would be. That's actually a terrible idea. Take it. I take that back. Go on. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I mean, it's a little my, cliche, but how no, about Commando this? How about two this? is good, but my story idea of another kid kidnapped, maybe, <laughs> maybe stupid. It's a, it's a, it's a little taken uh, in a lot of ways, but dig this. She has to rescue John Matrix because he, a bunch of the shit he did back in the days, done caught up with him. Dude, he's a 50-year-old man. I don't give a fuck. I mean, he's fucking 60 somethings almost 70. Yeah. So he's he's walking around the streets, 70 years old, just being dope, and he smells a bad guy coming up wind and turns his head and gets hit in the head with a bottle by another guy he didn't perceive because he's fucking old. And he has a valiant fight with like 10 guys, but they take him down and they and they grab him up and they take him down to a fucking iron eagle prison or wherever the fuck and they're doing bad shit to him and they're and they're trying to ransom the state department but the state department don't give a fuck about him cuz he's an old ass asset we're not going to give you money to rescue some old dude who used to murder for us back in the days y'all got me fucked up I'm the new director but an agent under him is a plucky Alyssa Milano played by Alyssa fucking Milano bring her back bring back it. Alyssa Milano <laughs> and she gets a bunch of John Wick Keanu Reeves training and and uh, and shows up in this movie as a junior agent for the CIA or whatever and finds out through her Black Ops network where her dad is stationed and her and a couple guys maybe go try to uh, rescue him and those guys get murdered and she wades through the, all of it and gets her dad out. Yeah. Boom! Commando 2. And she's killing like a hundred guys <laughs> with like chain guns and shit. Because she's yeah. got to rescue. And when he gets out and as long as there's the one fury. scene where she takes saw blades and throws them at people's heads. <laughs> I want one scene of that dude, as an and homage. Is, and dude, I'm telling you, and, and to satisfy the Arnold heads, he doesn't just sit there tied up until he, no, she no. gets him out. He like breaks out and he's fucking dudes up and he's on his own mission trying to get out. And they meet each other in the forest like, Dad, Alyssa Milano. I forgot what it is. Jenny. Dad, Jenny, you can do rescue me. <laughs> I told you I did not need it. I am old, but I can still do my job, blah, blah, blah. Horrible impression. But the bottom line, he's telling her that, like, you didn't need to come get me. She's like, yeah, I did, Dad. And it's then, like, when the whole army shows up, it's plain to him and plain to her that it's better that she brought SEAL Team 6 with her. And then her, John Matrix, and SEAL Team 6 all fight the bad guys. The bad guys kill everybody but Jenny and her dad. And at the end, they're just caked with dust and shit, and the choppers come down. And they're like, hey, John Matrix, you want to join back up? He's like, oh, Alyssa Milano goes, no chance. And then they play the same song from the first one. Boom. Somehow, down, down, somewhere, down, 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 down. 
<laughs> hey, if any, if you guys have any sequels uh, that you're interested in, uh, hit us up at email the greatest pod at gmail.com. Um, leave us a five star review. Oh, that'd be saying dope. which movies you would like to see. Something like that. That'll really help us out. Yeah, especially if you're not going to join our Patreon, which you could join our Patreon. That'd be super fresh. You get extra pods that are even crazier than this one. And you get uh, a beautiful art sent by me and Ron directly to your door on patreon.com, the greatest pod. Go look at our tiers. Invest at the level that you want to. Check it, knock us out a couple shekels every month. We'd really appreciate it. It helps keep the lights on. Yeah, so as always, thank you for listening to another amazing stupendous episode of the greatest oh!